This is gonna be the best lip liner technique video that you ever watched. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ms. Megan Robinson and it's come to my attention that not many people use or love lip liner. So I'm here to teach you all of my techniques when applying lip liner. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. And if you wanna up your lipstick game, please keep on watching. Lip liner is so important to makeup, especially if you're finding that you don't like, like all oh, this lipstick looks like garbage on me or like it's just not looking like a part of my face. It's because lip liner is needed to structure the face. It's the same way that we add bronzer and contour to foundation to give more life to it. Generally speaking, it's never the makeup's fault. It's usually user error. It's probably you. And that can come down to how you take care of your skin or your lip or your under eye, um, the tool that you're using or the technique that you're applying. So it's not generally that the pencil is too dry, maybe the lip is too dry. And that's where something like a lip primer or a lip treatment at night comes into play. I will swear by MAC lip gloss, specifically MAC lip gloss and the clear one because there's so much vitamin E and there's jojoba oil in the in it as well, my lips are constantly conditioned so that when I don't have anything on, they're generally super, super smooth. Like I have real lips, so that is just natural, real lip texture, but they're pillowy soft. Whatever's left over on the foundation brush, you're applying to basically tone down some of the natural color in your lip because lip color affects the lipstick or the lip liner or the lip gloss shade because it's still two tones mixing together. I see this comment a lot about, I put foundation over my lip and it's so cakey. There is a major difference between this mixing with lip shades versus this. All you want is a really soft tint, which is why I say it's leftover foundation. It's whatever is existing in your makeup brush. The next thing is that I get asked all the time is how do you pick a lip liner? There is no perfect lip liner. Whenever you want something to look natural on you, you're picking colors that already exist in the skin. So for me, natural on me is gonna have a pinkiness to it. it my lip also has a little bit of peachiness. I prefer pink. So for me, my natural looking lip color is whirl. I also get asked about the sharpener I use. It's the MAC one. I despise a pointy lip pencil, so I will always kind of dull the shape out. The next thing that you might have is a double lip line where you can see right here, there's a line that's naturally happening here and a line that's happening up here. It's up to you to decide what line you want to follow and that could change based on the color that you pick if i'm using a nude i might do my double lip line if i'm doing a red absolutely not because i'm gonna have like a clown mouth when i push my lip up you can kind of see the natural shadowing that happens which allows the lip to be fuller if you were to follow that i'm not necessarily going to take the liner all the way into here you might start where you know you have the defined line which tends to be here and I'm holding my pencil really far on the back because I don't, if I go here, it's way too much control and it's gonna to be too forced and too heavy. And I might stop where I start to see the double lip line kind of shift, which is in this area. And then from the inside corner, I'll meet that line. So that double lip line that is there can just be cleaned up with concealer or your powder. Actually, even a pencil too. So there's like eye pencils that are beige colors that you can just go in and clean that up into the foundation. So that can help mask that double lip line and what product you use that could look different depending on the foundation that you're wearing or if you're not wearing any foundation powder would probably be your best the other thing is pressure the lip pencil doesn't know what you want it to do you're in the driver's seat so i see a lot of people especially going in on a bare lip press so hard like they're coloring in a coloring book and they're only following kind of what the pencil is doing right like so right now as i do this 
I'm only looking at the pencil tip. When I do my own lip, I'm looking at the whole shape that I wanna create. And then you're stuck with this. And to me, that's like way too dark for my everyday lip. When I use small little strokes and I'm using the side of the pencil as opposed to the tip, this is a lot softer than this. This is a heavy lip line. This is a very soft lip line, which is how I like my lips to look. And natural is also the comparison of the liner to the lipstick or to your skin. This you're all, is always going to be a very done up look where this, the, I'm trying to think of this, like if you were to rate color intensity, my skin is like a three. This is like a three. So my liner intensity is going to be on a scale at a three as well. Where here you have three, three, and then you have like 10. And you can see that the color feathers into my natural lip color so well. We're here to get that same fade. The color needs to be so much darker because you need to take that from a 10 into like a six. So now I have a dark lip. This literally looks like sore lipstick where this is really soft where it could still be my own lip color. Even if you were to add concealer to the lip itself, you're putting that much and you're letting the brush spread it around if you want to change the shape of your lip that's all really personal don't have an overly defined cupid's bow and i like mine slightly more rounded because of that roundness that i want in my lip i like to start in the outside corner and build to the cupid's bow and this is my base color so your first liner should be like as close to the actual lipstick color you're using or as close to your lip tone that you have. And then I round out here. It's more like etching or sketching the liner down. So this gives me a really nice base to my lip. Stone for definition. This is a cool tone contour kind of lip shade. This is creating shape on the lip. So many people go in so heavy handed with this, which can be a vibe if you actually want like a gray lip, but I'm using it in the same way that I'd be really specific about where I'm contouring on the face. I'm gonna add a little bit here to create more of a shadow. And I like on top. This allows the lip to be anchored to my face. For me, I could use anything from nude to I'm really, really pink to like beige. I'm gonna use Honey Love today because it's been a minute. And your, so when you use more lip product, and again, if this is too much work for you, that's okay. But the appearance of just a lipstick by itself and a structured lip is very, very different. Not relying on the lipstick to do all the lifting. I love lip liner so much. Something I say all the time is sandwiching your colors. So I'm gonna go back over with Whirl to kind of marry the two together. You could use a brush if you wanted to, but I prefer to use the lipstick and then back in with Stone. Some people hate how I line my lips, stay hating. I, I draw right on the edge of where my skin and my lip meet. It's not fully over top. You can see the difference from someone who doesn't have a lip that's literally drawing on the skin. But if you have a fuller lip, do not listen to these people. You're not over drawing your lips in the same way. It's literally working with your lip shape. On me personally, I'm never gonna shorten. If I was to follow the actual shape of my lip, I'm gonna lose a lot of the fullness that I have. Again, depending on the finish of your lip that you want. I like lip gloss. I'm a lip gloss girly. This has to come back. This was a color called Mystic Powers. And it's not about having too much lip product on. It's, it's painting. It's how you're playing with light and you're mixing the lip gloss into the lipstick, which is ultimately creating more contrast in your lip because now that liner actually looks a little bit deeper and I have enough real estate that I can go over the liner itself. 
So that's a very structured Miss Megan lip. And again, it does come down to personal preference. I don't feel like my makeup is completed until my lip is structured. If your lip line is kind of blurred and you go in, you just kind of draw a line. The part that's blurred is gonna be past the lip liner line. And that's how you don't get that really nice structure to the lip, which is why foundation is so important. I just take Honey Love and I go like this. And I go right in here because I see so many people apply their lipstick all the way in here. So you can see it's filled my double lip line. I feel uncomfortable. This looks like a completed look with the correct tone and texture. This just, I mean, I love the color, but it's just not there. I, oh my God, this makes me feel like I had just been to the dentist and like my face is swollen. When you are doing nude lipstick, not natural or neutral, but nude, which is generally taking your foundation tone or your skin tone and putting that on your lip, you're losing a lot of that natural color. It usually needs to be paired with a little bit more eye makeup and it always needs a lip liner. It always needs a lip liner. I use this as my base color. If you're confident with lip liner, you can always start with your lip liner. If you're unsure, start with your lipstick, but don't do the edges like I had just shown you with the Honey Love. Just kind of fill the center. The liner is intended for these really small areas. So you wouldn't paint like your living room with the brush that you use to do like the trim and like around the sockets and the corners. It's it it, it, ser it serves a purpose. I love it. I'm going to take this in just a little bit. Oh, I love hodgepodge. Please, for the love of God, bring it back. Bring it back. Stone for definition. To create that shape. Stone is great on fair complexions. From Unearthly Cosmetics, Cafe has a little bit less purpleiness to it in comparison to Stone. And then there's Cursed as well, which is greater on like deeper complexions. And then Coffee. Eye Pencil from MAC is a great, great shade for the lip on darker skin tones. And then I love a little bit of clear lip gloss. So this is why instead of buying more product, learn, like really learn the textures and performance of what you have to see how you can manipulate it and make it work for you. And then in a scenario like this, because it happens to me all the time where people are like, I want what you're wearing, what's on your lip. You have to identify what do you like about it? Do you like the structure that you're seeing around the edge? Do you like that it's darker than my skin tone? Do you like the flat pink color that you can kind of see behind? Or do you like the finish of the gloss? So there's so many different factors in how you can make your lip liner and your lip work for you and it's finding those like little niche things that are so important to you that you carry into your makeup routine and learn to like elevate and perfect it and there's no like right or wrong if your cupid's bow is more defined and you follow that then that is your cupid's bow and you have a more structured lip if it's defined and you don't like it and you fill it in more that's what you like that is okay i love clear lip gloss Maybe something else another reason that you may struggle with finding the proper like lip color or like a lip that you like does come down to formula and finish if you didn't see on tiktok makeup by mario said he was a fan of my content and he sent me some products that he selected for me to try this is smoky pink pencil the first thing you have to identify even before you get into the lip liner area is the texture or formula or finish of a lip product because that impacts the shade so aggressively uh, I'm gonna, so this is smoky pink, which is like slightly more gray and a little bit, I think it's almost lighter than whirl. That's whirl, that's smoky pink. It almost looks warmer on my hand, but not when it goes on the lip because it's mixing with other pink tones. Okay, so let's say from here, I have my liner down because that's what I know I like. Everybody has like a favorite product. I know I love, you know, this tone of liner. 
from here, if I want something that's natural, that looks like my lip, but better, the closer you are to like the texture of your own lip, the more natural the product's gonna look because it's that like no makeup makeup. I'm gonna use Velvet Teddy as an example. One of my least favorite shades on me, but one of the most popular. If I go in, like, yes, this matches the liner, but this is a matte lipstick. So it is entirely opaque. I have now covered my own lip shade. So even though it's within the same like color family and tone, this now looks more done up and I don't like it. Now, if I go in with something sheer, something sheer, whether that's like, for me, thanks it's MAC or clear lip glass or, or the plumping gloss sticks, this finish where I can still see my lip through it and very similar texture is a lot more natural looking than Velvet Teddy, even though it's sitting in the same like color family, but texture is everything. Same thing with foundation. The more you cover the skin, the more like done up it can look. And that's all gonna change person to person. And my lip is naturally such a bright pink that if I cover that in any way, when trying to find something natural, it looks overly done. So, I mean, that's fine. It's just not, doesn't do anything for me. It's not a Miss Megan face. That is a Miss Megan face. If you had, and this is a real life example of somebody who wanted a coral lipstick, but everything that they put on turned like really, really pink because her lip was naturally pink. So if she was picking out pink corals, it was intensifying the pink because pink already existed. So when you figure that a coral is basically like pink, red, and orange, like a combo of those, if that pinkiness already exists in the lip, I love this color so much, then what I have to do is add in orange over top because the red and the pink is already there. I need to create a coral. So sometimes it's not just the lipstick as it sits and you look at it, it's what the lips, what the lipstick is gonna do when it's mixing. Oh my God, this is such a pretty color. Those are some of my very important lip liner techniques that I needed to share with you guys because I think lip liner is one of the best makeup products. It's one of my personal favorite makeup products. I hope that you apply some of these techniques to your own looks. I'd love to hear about it if you do. Subscribe and make sure you turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. You can also check me out on Instagram. It's all under the same name, at Miss Megan Robinson. Let me know what your favorite lip liner combo is of all time and what you use for definition. Oh my God, that's another thing. Your definition shade, if it's not coming from a contour perspective, is coming from a darker version of what you're already working with. So like if you're using Ruby Woo with Ruby Woo liner, if you wanted more definition, you might go in with Cherry. If you're a deeper complexion, you might go in with chestnut. And these are the things that like you should play within to see what suits you. Okay. Now that's all of my lip liner techniques for you. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.